Here I've got a pretty nice number theory problem from the Danube contest in mathematics. So our goal is to find all integers x and y such that x squared times the quantity x squared plus 1 is equal to 21y minus 1. So let's look at some things about this problem that might jump out and be important. First is clearly the fact that 21 is equal to 3 times 7. We'll most definitely use either that it is a multiple of 3 or that it is a multiple of 7. Then I've got two kind of trickier hints. The first hint is that maybe we should be completing the square over the integers. And so over here we have a quartic polynomial, but the way that it's written, i.e. it's not multiplied out, and we've got this x squared term here, really gives us a big hint that we should be thinking about putting a perfect square into this situation. But once you're putting a perfect square into one of these situations, you probably want to use the fact that only certain numbers are perfect squares modulo n, where we need to choose our value of n depending on the problem. So we'll see what comes up here. Okay, so let's take this equation and what I want to do is maybe multiply out the left-hand side and then just leave the right-hand side for now. So that's going to give me x to the fourth plus x squared is equal to 21 times y minus 1. All right, let's look at this. So let's see what we can do to start completing the square on the left-hand side. Well, notice we have x squared squared plus x squared. But the only time we have this setup where our squared term and our linear term here, I'm thinking about x squared as my linear term since x to the fourth is, fourth is x squared squared, have the same coefficients is when that coefficient is equal to four. You might think, well, why is that? That's because two times two and two plus two are the same. And two is the only number that has that property. So if I multiply this whole equation by four, maybe I'm off to a good start. But if I do that on the left-hand side, I clearly have to also do that on the right-hand side. So I'll change this one to a four. Now I can start thinking about adding something to the left-hand side to complete the square. And what should I add? Well, probably one, because that'll make this thing factor pretty nicely. So now I'll write this as 4x to the fourth plus 4x squared plus 1 equals 4 times 21 to the y minus 3. So there, I just added 1 to both sides of the equation. But now we've got 2x squared plus 1 quantity squared is equal to 4 times 21y minus 3. Now we're going to look at the first few cases first. So let's look at the case when y is equal to 0. So notice if y is equal to 0, we'll have 21 to the 0, which is 1. And so that means that 2x squared plus 1 quantity squared will just be 4 minus 3. In other words, it'll be 1. Okay, but that tells us that 2x squared plus 1 equals plus or minus 1. Okay, but notice then that means that x is equal to 0. That's the only possibility there. And that occurs when this right-hand side is plus 1. Notice if the right-hand side is minus 1, we get no real solution and thus no integer solution. So that gives us our first ordered pair of solutions, and that is 1, 0. Okay, so now let's just jump to the next case. So case number 2, and that will be y equals 1. Okay, so let's see what we get there. So my left-hand side will stay the same for now. We'll have 2x squared plus 1 quantity squared is equal to 4 times 21 minus 3. But 4 times 21 is 84 minus 3 is 81. And that's nice because that's a perfect square. That's equal to 9 squared. So if I take the square root, I'll get 2x squared plus 1 is equal to plus or minus 9. But I don't need to consider the negative portion of the square root because 2x squared plus 1 is always positive. So I'll move the 1 over 
and that'll leave me 2x squared equals 8. But that means x squared is equal to 4, but that means x is equal to plus or minus 2. So that gives me two more solutions. I have plus minus 2 comma 1. Now let's look at one more case before we actually argue these are the only two solutions. So here we'll do case three, and that'll be if y is equal to two. So that means we'll have two x squared plus one squared is equal to four times 21 squared minus three. Okay, so let's calculate that number real quick. So calculating that real quick, we'll see that we get 1761. And then you can check that that is between 41 squared and 42 squared. So that means it's not a perfect square, which means it does not give us a solution to this equation because first of all, we need this thing to be a perfect square. Okay, so let's get rid of this calculation and then we'll show that we indeed have the only two solutions. So far, we've shown that the ordered pair 1, 0 and plus minus 2, 1 are solutions to our equation over here. Then as a little homework exercise, you guys should answer the question, well, what happens if y is less than 0? As a spoiler, I'll say that there are no more solutions, but maybe put your argument in the comments. And so we can finish this problem off by proving the following claim. And that is 2x squared plus 1 squared equals 4 times 21y minus 3 has no solutions for y bigger than or equal to 2. Okay, well, maybe how could we work on this? Well, here we can use our second hint, which is only certain numbers are perfect squares modulo n. And now what do we want to reduce mod? Well, that's really going to depend on the factors of 21. Like we noticed before, 21 factors as 7 times 3. So if y is bigger than or equal to 2, then this thing right here is always a multiple of 7 squared and 3 squared. So that motivates us to reduce this modulo 49 or modulo 9. Since 9 is a little bit smaller, that's what we'll do. So just to reiterate, we're going to reduce mod 9, starting out with the right-hand side. So we'll have 4 times 21 to the y minus 3. That's going to be congruent to minus 3 mod 9. And why is that? Well, if y is bigger than or equal to 2, then 21 to the y is a multiple of 9, so that's 0 mod 9. But now let's recall that negative 3 is congruent to 6 mod 9. So now we just have to show that it's impossible for 6 to be a perfect square mod 9, since our right-hand side is a perfect square, and then we're good to go. And we can do that with just a chart since nine is pretty small. So here's what we'll do. Our chart will be m and then m squared mod nine. So in other words, we're finding all the perfect squares mod nine. So we'll square each of these and reduce mod nine. So zero squared is zero, one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, which is zero. 4 squared is 16, which is the same thing as 7. 5 squared is 25, which is the same thing as 7 as well. But that kind of makes sense because 5 is equal to negative 4, so they should square to the same thing. Okay, then 6 squared will be 0, 7 squared will be 4, and 8 squared will be 1. Again, here we can just quickly use the fact that 6 is equal to minus 3, 7 is equal to minus 2, and 8 is equal to minus 1. But now, the important thing to notice is that none are congruent to 6 mod 9. So what that means is that m squared is never congruent to 6 mod 9, but just saying that our m squared is playing, being played by the role of this, that tells us that 2x squared plus 1 squared is never congruent to 6 
mod 9. In other words, there are no more solutions. And that's a good place to stop.